Hi, this is Sarah Levin, the Artful Inker. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I've got this pretty Nature's Harvest card to share with you. Let's get started. For this card, we're going to be using the Nature's Harvest bundle, which can be found in the July through December mini catalog from Stampin' Up! And it comes with the stamp set and then the harvest dies. Let me set this aside and grab a piece of basic white and my Mossy Meadow ink pad. And let's just ink up this big cone flower. Going to angle it just a little bit so that it absolutely fits on my piece of paper. And then I'm going to stamp that a second time. Okay, and then I've got this small flower that reminds me of chicory. Okay, let's move these out of the way. And I'm through with the mossy meadow, so let's close it up. And I want these to dry just a minute, so I'm going to move to my card base, which is Misty Moonlight. And I've cut it four and a quarter by 11 and scored it five and a half. And I'm going to use some Misty Moonlight ink and my blending brush and just apply some ink on the corners to deepen it just a little bit. So let's go all the way around. And again, just doing at each of the corners. And when we layer this up, it'll give it uh, deepen that tone just a little bit. It can be a little hard to see here in the with the lights on as I record. There we go. And let's check these other two and maybe add just a little more ink to them. I feel like I'm missing the the top of this one, the point. Okay, that'll be enough, and we'll set this out of the way, and let's close this up. And while we're doing things that are going to need to dry, I'm going to bring in this piece of craft. This comes in a six by six sheet in the mini catalog, and I've cut it with one of the uh, color and contours um, dies. And I've got my little lid here with a couple of drops of water, and I'm going to add some multi-purpose glue, just a little bit and take a, a brush that I use for sticky things. If you've been here before, you know I keep one brush for when I'm doing sticky so that I don't run my uh, good brushes. And then we're just going to splatter. I don't wanna thin this out too much. It'll take too long to dry. I'd like a little more up in this area. Okay, so let's set that aside to dry. And then we are ready to color. So let me take this out of the way and bring these pieces back in. And let's zoom in for the coloring so that we'll both be able to see well. 
and I'm going to start with this little flower and I've got my dark balmy blue and I'm not completely coloring everything. I'm just stroking in a little bit of color so that you get the idea that these petals are blue and the bullet tip is perfect for this. Leaving a little bit of white is absolutely okay. Just making sure I get all the way around. So they've got the idea that they're blue. And then I'm going to use my Fresh Freesia on the cone flowers. And using the dark in the bullet tip and the light in the brush tip except I've uh, done that completely opposite. Here's the dark. And then let's make sure that the light is. Okay, so I'm just going to stroke in some of this dark in places. And then I'm coming back with the light all over. And I'm not giving this a real careful coloring. You can, but for our purposes, that's not necessary. And then I want to go back in with this dark bullet tip in a couple of places. And that's how we're going to get our shadowing and a little bit of differentiation between the petals. Okay. And up here on this one, we're going to come with the dark all the way around here. And down here. And let's see, we've got this little bit of petal. And now I'm just going to come back and blend that with the light. If you're working a little slower than I am, then don't put all of your dark in at one time if you're wanting to blend it. Okay, and then same thing over here. Let's do these real quick. You can see this is a very fast coloring technique. We're not looking to make these art flowers. We're just looking to add some color. And remember that your um, alcohol ink continues to flow. So as you get to the um, tips of the flowers, pick your marker up. It'll get there without you going all the way to the end. Okay. And again, this is just real easy, coloring along the tops. And then let's come on out. And stroking that dark in at the bottoms. And then let's Okay, so those are done. Let's get our um, stems and leaves. And I want my dark and light old olive. And I want the dark bullet tip and the light brush. So I'm going to have to be a little more careful since I'm using the... Um, light in the brush tip so I need to slow down just a little bit so that I more or less stay in the lines and then we're going to use the dark here and color in across some of that veining in the leaf and if we blend right over it then it gives us a little bit of uh, 
shadow and contour. And come on down here. And then let's forget which one I had in my hand. Okay, so a little bit of dark here and a little bit of dark here on either side of this stem. And then let's bring these together with the light and this one out towards the tip and then back to the dark. Bring that light in over top to soften that a little bit. Now these we're not going to color. And then let's color our stems on what I'm going to call my chicory with the bullet tip of the light old olive. I saw some of this in bloom the other day when I was out for a walk. Okay, and then we need to do the tops of those cone flowers. And I've got my, let's see, light crumb cake. And I've got my dark soft suede. I'm going to use bullet tips in both of those. And just color in with the crumb cake. And then we're going to dot in some of this, and then there's kind of a line up here at the top. So, and that's it for those. Let me go and um, die cut these, and I'll be right back, and we'll be just about ready to assemble. Okay, so I've got these pieces cut with our harvest dies. But this one has more white space than I want. And so I'm going to take my snips and come in here and remove some of that. And that's just a really easy, almost V cut in here to take it out. And I'm doing this, sometimes I would color this space, but with the craft paper behind, um, I didn't want to take the time to kind of match that with my shading. So I'm just going to open this up and then not worry about coming in here with the shading at all. So that's my preference and does not have to be yours. Okay, so. Then we have this piece of craft that we cut with the uh, scallop contour dies. Sorry for ca calling those the uh, color and contour. That's the stamp set. And we're going to take care of those splatters now. And I need to put this on a piece of scrap paper to catch things. We're going to use some of the gilded leafing. I find, I don't know about you, but I find in fall and winter, I use way more uh, shiny uh, kinds of things on my cards, more embossing, but I really love the look of the gilded leaf leafing as it's brighter than the um, embossing generally is. So let's carefully tip this to the side and brush it off. So you can see our pretty gold splatter here. And I'm going to set this aside and pop all of this back in my bottle. So let me turn the camera off a moment and I'll do that and be right back. So let's start assembling our card. And for the inside, I've got a piece of basic white that's four by five and a quarter. And this scallop cut from the Harvest uh, Meadow designer paper using 
uh, one of the scallop contour dies, and then a piece of Misty Moonlight cardstock. Um, the cardstock is a half an inch by four and a quarter, and the scallop is four and a quarter, and it started at an inch. Okay, so let's put our adhesive on the back of this. Just one little line will do. And I want to straighten this up on the grid paper. And then we're going to put this down so that it's got a little bit of designer paper border at the bottom. And then of course that scallop at the top. And then our adhesive. And let's straighten this up on the grid paper. You too can get this grid paper. You can find it in my store. And there's a link for my store in the description below the video that you can use if you're in the United States. Let me just make sure that I've... Yes, I need to trim just a little bit off. My tendency is to go a little longer because I would rather trim than not have enough. And back with our card base. And then this goes in with multi-purpose glue. And in this case, I'm checking the bottom and uh, two sides. The top won't be as noticeable because you've got all of this expanse. And then I've got a piece of the Harvest Meadow designer paper. And this is four by five and a quarter. This makes me think of a pair of blue jeans and a pretty fall sweater. And then we've got that piece cut with the scalloped contour dies. Oops. And I'm going to give this more uh, dimensionals than it might need it, because of this little bit of a, a bow in the middle. So I want to make sure that I've got dimensionals to hold that even once it's down on my card. I'm just checking to make sure that everything's straight-ish. Okay, and then next I've got a piece of copper foil that I've cut with one of the Harvest dies. I am mixing my metallics, and that's totally okay by me. If you don't like to mix your metallics, then you can cut gold foil instead. And I'm using multi-purpose glue on this. And if you would prefer the whole piece to be um, adhered flat, you could use adhesive sheet instead. And then let's see what we can do with some dimensionals behind our flowers. Okay, and then we'll see if we can fit some mini dimensionals on the stems. Okay. And 
same here. Let's put a dimensional behind this and a mini behind each one of these flowers. Oops, stuck to my finger. And we need a second dimensional under each one of these. Okay, and then we've got this second set of flowers that we just colored the petals, and I went ahead and die cut them because that takes care of most of our cutting. And then let's cut these apart and come in here and remove the stem piece. And I left a little pointed edge, and I'd rather have that rounded. And then I'm going to remove the top here. Trim this just a little further. There's too much white along the edge. Okay. Let's do that. And then here's this one. Okay, and this just adds a tiny bit more dimension to our flowers this way. So that they look like they've got even more petals. And then let's add some ribbon. I've got the bumblebee gingham and then the let's call this by the right name the scalloped lace trim and i'm going to layer these Let's turn our ribbons so that I get my lace on the front. I want the bumblebee showing through and then tighten this up. And here are my scissors. And let's take these out of the way and grab my mini glue dots. I'm sure that my tails are much too long for this little arrangement. But I want to, okay. Okay, and now it's time to trim these. And then let's take a my take your pick and so that my ribbons stay 
where I want them to be. I'm going to tuck a mini glue dot in up towards the top of each of these layers. And that will keep them pretty well lined up, but still leave this uh, light looking down at the bottom. Okay, so that's our Nature's Harvest card. Thanks for stopping in today. This was Sarah Levin, the Artful Anchor of theartfulanchor.com. If you're in the United States, please use the link in the description below the video to buy some of your Stampin' Up! products. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with your card-making friends. And when you subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell, you'll be notified the next time I upload a video. Have a great day. Bye.